This program is a copyrighted production of Indiana Sports Network and cannot be shown, reproduced, or redistributed in any way or in any form without prior written permission from Indiana Sports Network. Welcome to Rose Holman Institute of Technology, the U.S. News and World Report's number one engineering school in the United States that offers a master's as its highest degree for 18 consecutive years. Rose Holman, where you come to find yourself. Find yourself through personal growth, through personal development, through study, research, and invention. Rose Holman, your home for academic and athletic excellence. This game is presented by the Indiana Army National Guard. And welcome to Terre Haute, Indiana at Holbert Arena, the home of the Rose Holman Institute of Technology and uh, Franklin College. The ladies have come in and will take on Rose Holman in a second place game in the HCAC. It's on the line tonight and uh, we've had to move some things. So. Uh, just making sure everything's are going. Uh, hello, right. everyone. I'm Herb King. <laughs> Troy Fears is alongside me this evening, and we're going to have a great time bringing you basketball. Had a delay in what's going on, so we just got on the air, and we'll have the start of this ball game somewhere near 9 o'clock this evening. So I know it's going to be a late one. We're going to have a great time. Two good ball clubs coming into this one, both 3-1 and one in the HCAC. Rose Holman comes in with a 5-4 and four record. Again, 3-1 and one in the HCAC. Franklin at 4-6, and six, but they're also 3-1 and one in the HCAC. This is a big ball game for both these teams. <laughs> it really is, and when you look at both teams on paper, Herb, you can tell how evenly matched they are uh, as far as their scoring goes, rebounds, steals, those types of things. Uh, it's going to be a good, tough match matchup tonight. You know, the first game after the winter break, um, Ro Rose Holman has won, you know, their last three games, but hasn't played since December the 15th. So, you know, both teams haven't played in a couple weeks, so that's going to be uh, interesting to see here, uh, again, in a late night version <laughs> of uh, <laughs> women's college basketball here. It's going to be, you know, obviously these young kids, you know, they're used to staying up late, and they're <laughs> They're going to be good to go until midnight or so, I'm sure. But uh, <laughs> it's going to be a battle. It's where the battle's going to be is tomorrow <laughs> morning <laughs> in our regular jobs. We're going to go, wow, <laughs> right. what a game last exactly. night was. Right. So hopefully <laughs> it won't go into overtime, but I do think it's going to be an exciting <laughs> game. And, and like I said, evenly matched for both squads. Well, the men got underway at about 7.30 in Franklin. And they're just about ready to finish when I last saw Rose Holman trailed by 10. But uh, for the women's team, again, both of these teams come in 3-1. and one. For Rose Holman, that's a big thing. This is a huge ball game. Last year, Rose Holman took, took it on the chin. The ladies did. The year before, took it on the chin, big time. And all of a sudden, um, Rose Holman has picked up several athletes, several players. They've started to gel. Things have started to look pretty good. Uh, they've won several ball games, and again, three in a row in the conference. Their last two losses were to nationally ranked teams. Yeah. So um, they're not afraid of anybody, but at the same time, they're playing very well. They are, and anytime you can get three players to average double digits, you know, and points scored, which Rose Holman has right now, uh, you know you're distributing the ball well and, and they're playing well as a team. You know, they're a young team as well, you know, Rose Holman. Now, Franklin, on the other hand, they've got a lot of players. I, I counted 17 on the roster compared to 10 that uh, Rose Holman has. So Franklin likes and they like to play a lot of players. You're going to see, uh, you know, 8, 9, 10 girls from Franklin getting some quality playing time tonight. They like to shuffle them in and out. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how Rose Holman uh, reacts to that and, and, again, how their top three scores uh, and the team overall can 
can keep it together tonight. Well, the big change has been when Rowan Hine was inserted into the lineup after she had her injury at the start of the year. Um, they had to wait till she got healthy. She got healthy, and all of a sudden, when she got healthy, Rose Holman got healthy. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> everything kind of circles around her. Not only does she score well, but Rowan just passes the ball well, controls the, the tempo of the ball game, and does a lot of things that Coach John Prevo really wants to see on the floor and just how she handles herself. And with the ball distribution and being able to do those things, um, she's been a huge asset uh, to Rose Holman basketball here to start the season. She has. You know, she averages just over 14 points per game, and she's only a sophomore, like I said, that part of that young nucleus, but she plays like she's a lot older than that, and she's definitely the team leader when it comes to distributing the ball and, and kind of leading the team, and, and how they go is how Rowan goes, and so far she's been doing well this early in this season. Again, it's Franklin College coming in to play against Rose Holman in HCAC women's basketball action. We'll take a break and be right back. You're watching Indiana Sports Network. In Searcy, Arkansas, a young man says I love you for the first time, but his girlfriend doesn't quite hear. In Franklin, Tennessee, a boy encounters his first pickle. And in Kyle, Texas, after a mission for tots, cousins realize they're a long way from Kyle, Texas. One day, many people, millions of orders. This is Howie Sonic. Wherever life takes you, whatever stage, anything that you need, no matter the season, getting there together. We are ready when you are. Crane cares. The news says Gen Z is struggling. I've got news for them. I wait tables. But last week, I built a field hospital. I put out a forest fire. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. I've saved lives. And led a team on patrol. I serve. While I go to school full-time. While I work full-time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. If I crave something, I have to have it. Well, so what are you craving? Like, what do you crave? Attention, apparently. Look at him all See, sitting in the middle. I know, right? <laughs> it is really awkward. You just chose to yeah. sit there. <laughs> Sonic Crave Cheeseburger. You're watching College Sports on the Indiana Sports Network, presented by the Indiana Army National Guard. And again, we want to thank the Indiana Army National Guard for helping to sponsor sports, especially here at Rose Holman, uh, given the opportunity to see what's going on again tonight. Uh, Rose Holman's taking on Franklin in women's basketball. Jamie Baum has been the other player that's really uh, – and I'm going to say had great ball games. She's averaged a double-double the <laughs> last three ball games, which Rose Holman has won. Uh, her outside shooting, those kinds of things have really helped on. She's one of the players that's averaging double figures, along with Jordan Barlow. Uh, you put those three in, Baum, uh, Ro oh, excuse me, Hein, Barlow, and Baum, those three averaging double figures. But uh, really, uh, Jamie Baum's had an outstanding start to her uh, HCAC season. Yeah, she's had seven, I believe, double-digit you know, games uh, coming into uh, tonight, and she averages over 10 rebounds a game uh, in the last three contests, as you mentioned, the last three which Rose Holman won, and uh, they're going to need to to do that again tonight. Uh, Franklin is a little bigger team, uh, not much, but just a little bit. And again, when you look at the stats and uh, compare both teams, you do see that Franklin has the edge in rebounds per game uh, by three or four. And that's something that Rose Holman is going to have to work on tonight uh, as far as maintaining those rebounds and especially the offensive side of the ball. If they can get those offensive rebounds and get those putbacks, uh, they'll have some success. 
And really, it's a different style from the last couple years. If you're familiar with what's going on here, a much different style. They're a lot freer and easier to shoot the basketball outside. I think they're better shots outside. They don't pound it in as much. They spread the floor a little bit better, a little more patience in what's going on, but at the same time, able to pull the trigger whenever they want to. And it's a little different style than what Coach John Prevo's had offensively. Defensively, it's the same thing. Yeah, They're playing help side defense, really going at it very hard. They cause problems for the other team scoring the basketball, and they really cause all kinds of turnovers out in front, which help lead to, to points at the other end. But offensively, it's been a much more free and open flow to the game, and a lot more fun to watch and a lot higher scoring ball game. That's why you have three players in, in uh, double figures but everybody else is still playing and scoring as well. Yeah, and, you know, Coach Prevo's been around long enough to, to know how to, you know, work with the talent that he's got, and uh, he clearly he sees that, that and that, that, that's working for them. Uh, you know, you mentioned turnovers, and that's another thing that Franklin um, is uh, prone at. They, they, they do have a lot of turnovers, and you're going to need Rose Holman tonight to, to kind of create those uh, turnovers on the defensive end, uh, which we know they can do. And then, again, if they can capitalize on that uh, and score some points on the offensive end, it's, it, it's going to be a good night for Rose Holman. But as we mentioned at the very beginning, it's, it's going to be a close matchup, uh, and these two teams are uh, battling for, for second place in conference. And uh, this is a big conference game here right after the new year and we'll see where the there's still obviously a lot of games to be played but this is a big one right off the bat for those of you who don't understand the way the conferences uh tournament takes place the top six teams play correct the top two teams get buys and the winning team of the regular season hosts so there is something to be said for second place. Even if you don't win it, win it in the right. regular season, you still get that bye with an opportunity to play in the quarterfinals. And so you don't have to play three games to win. You only have to play two. Right. So it is a big deal to it come is. in second place. It's really not much different than first place other than you don't get to host. Yeah. You know, and it's going to be tough for anybody to catch uh, Transylvania. Uh, this year, they're 4-0 uh, in the league, 11-0 uh, overall, and ranked in the top 10 um, coming into this week. So they're they're going to be tough, <laughs> and they but, are tough. But at but, the same time, both of these but, teams played them pretty pretty tough. Franklin right. within 10, Rose Holm in the, Holm in the same thing. Um, so both of these teams are pretty evenly matched. When you said that earlier, that evenly matched idea or really it is true. The two leading scorers for Franklin, uh, Destiny Cross, uh, senior six feet, two inches tall. Also Jessica Nix, she's a senior at 5'10". The, both of those young ladies average at 11'6 and 11'2 uh, per game and they lead in most categories. The rest of uh, Franklin's roster scores as well. So they're yeah. very deep as well. You see a they lot are. of players play, mm -hmm. and that first and second unit are just as important as, as the starters. So uh, whoever substitutes in is going to have the same ability to shoot and do the. It's not just a one or two person yeah. team in you know, both of these. And if I remember last year's Franklin team and in and, and the years past, they like to shuffle in, you know, four or five at a time. You know, it's not just <laughs> one or two players. It's 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 similar to hockey. You know, we're gonna get a whole new <laughs> shift, new line shift. new line shift coming in uh, every couple minutes and it's uh, it it's different but it works for them. Uh, and we'll see how the flow of the game goes tonight if, the, if they do the same thing. Well, again, we're, uh, we apologize for the late start. Um, Franklin wasn't able to show up until about 7.30. It was really close to that when they, when they showed up. So uh, actually it was after that. It was almost 8 o'clock. And uh, when that all took place, uh, again, we're looking at starting close. In two minutes, we'll have uh, the uh, national anthem and starting lineups and get those kinds of things taken care of. But we are going to play basketball. The game was yeah, not canceled. That's a good thing for exactly. both of these squads. They want to play it, 
Um, it's it's a big deal for both of them. Uh, let's let the uh, the game de be determined on the court and do the right things that way. And yeah. we're really happy to bring you this action again. Sponsored by the Indiana Army National Guard. We're at Rose Holman and it's Franklin taking on Rose Holman here in women's basketball HCAC action. We'll pause and be right back for the starting lineups for both these teams. You're watching Indiana Sports Network. I need a Mocha Crunch Blast, please. You got it. I'm on the Mocha Crunch. We're gonna need more espresso chunks. Order up. Sonic Mocha Crunch Blast. Treatment for those with mental illnesses and addiction issues has evolved over the years. In the late 1960s, Indiana's mental health system began to take shape. From 1971 to 2021, Hamilton Center has touched the lives of thousands of people. In central and west central Indiana, we are committed to the latest therapies to improve the quality of life for those with mental illnesses. Treatment works. Recovery is possible. And thank you, Indiana. Hey, this is Todd Hine with LaborLink. The federal unemployment benefits have ended. However, there has never been a better job market in history. This puts you in an incredible position. Go to GoLaborLink.com and apply now. We have many jobs available, but they will fill up fast due to demand. Hey, take advantage of the job market and start work right away with LaborLink. The city of Brazil was founded in 1866. By 1876, there were two schools, seven dry goods stores, two hardware stores, four churches, and five drug stores. One of those drug stores is still there today, Lynn's Pharmacy. Lynn's Pharmacy has grown from a small neighborhood drug store to a modern pharmacy, offering prescriptions and medical equipment with old-fashioned values and unparalleled service. You can even step back in time and visit Lynn's Soda Parlor here at Lynn's Pharmacy, downtown Brazil. You are watching HCAC Women's Basketball at rolls Holman on the Indiana Sports Network. At Indiana Land and Lifestyle, we go to great depths to list and sell your property. <laughs> <laughs> if your agent isn't willing to go to these depths, six acres with bass, to list and sell your property, don't you think that's a little fishy? And there's fish everywhere. Oh! And snapping turtles! For all your Indiana land needs, check us out at indianalandandlifestyle.com. Oh, that's gross. I'm Ryan Luce with State Farm in Clinton, Indiana. We're here to help life go right for you and your family. Our team takes pride in helping families in the Wabash Valley. With all of their insurance and financial needs. We are here to make your claims process simple. Like a good neighbor. Welcome to Sonic. May I take your order? One grape cheeseburger. I'm on it. Grape cheeseburger, almost ready. On my way. Someone pass me the crepe sauce. Almost ready on the burger. One Sonic Crepe Cheeseburger. You're watching College Sports on the Indiana Sports Network, presented by the Indiana Army National Guard. You are watching HCAC Women's Basketball at Rolls Holman on the Indiana Sports Network. Franklin College, uh, Destiny Cross is not starting and she's not in the lineup that way. So that's going to be a big change for them as uh, we anticipated that. But going in for Rose Holman, again, it'll be 
uh, Rowan Hine, and we have number 21 is Barlow, 23 is Baum, 33 Jester, and number 50 is Rose Burnham. And again, uh, Rose Holman will start what is a traditional lineup for them, at least for this year. They've been able to, to really play very effectively at the start of ball games. We'll see if they can get out to a good quick start this time as well. Stepping into the circle for Franklin is Jasmine Walker as a shield a freshman from Jeffersonville, Indiana. Tip is up and controlled by Franklin. Baker with the basketball. Again, that solid defense by Rose Holman. You'll see the man pressure all the way across the, the court. Doing a very nice job in hedging on those screens are the ladies. Bruner with the drive and she'll pull it back out to Baker. Feed down on the inside and it's stolen away. Walker couldn't handle the basketball and it's picked up by Rowan Hine. Hine with the ball, nice driving to the top of the key. Yeah, to almost turned ball. over. Did almost turn that over Herb, you're exactly right. Nice pass down low. Easy bucket there by Jordan Barlow. Like to see that early in the ball game for the engineers. O'Day feeds down inside to Walker. Puts the shot up, no good. Rebound to Hines, she'll travel with it and only because she fell over her own player. <laughs> good hustle by the ladies on this one. Both sides, everybody on the floor after the ball. Turnover will give the ball back to the Lady Grizzlies. Both teams playing hard and quick here in this first minute of action. Baker will triple the, uh, trigger the ball inside. Ball's up and shot is partially blocked by Burnham on the inside. And the engineers in the attacking zone. Shots up and good by Jordan Barlow. 4-0, Rose Holman with the lead. 4-0, Jaden Barlow. <laughs> nice shooting early for Jaden. And just excellent defense here by Rose. Nice switch there by Barlow. Causing the, tipped it out. They keep these, this defense up. It's gonna be a long night for Franklin. It's a normal pressure that they've shown all year. Grizzlies with the ball. Again, trailing four to nothing to Rose Holman. Baker with the drive. She'll kick it back outside to Bruner. He puts the shot up, doesn't get it to go. The rebound comes out to Rose Holman. Jamie Baum with the board, crosses center court line and gives it up to Jester. Feed down inside to Hine. Pump fake, gets the shot up and in. Rowan Hine with two points. It's six to nothing, Rose Holman. You know, it is cold outside her, but it is hot in here tonight for Rose Holman early. They're heating it up. Open shot outside, and they left her open, and Kayla Bruner makes them pay with a three-point basket. It's six to three. Knew that was a matter of time for Kayla. Kind of surprised that Hine didn't take that one down inside. Stolen yeah. away, nice play on the inside by Jasmine Walker. She tipped it away, but stolen right back by Hine. Rowan with the drive. She'll pull it back up, looking for a cutter. Gets Burnham on the cut, got it up nice. and in. Rose Burnham and the assist to Rowan Hine. Rose Burnham stayed with that play and was in great position to make that cut. Founder and got her first two points of the game. Again, Franklin in the attacking zone and solid defense by Rose Holman. They really have only let him have one open look. That's a really nice hard drive by, uh, by Jessica Nix as she puts that one in a really good crossover move and it's eight to five. Yeah, Jessica Nix has done that move before. You could tell the Martin Indi Martinsville, Indiana native there's Barlow again with another putback. Rose, Rose Burnham was the one that caught that one in stride and laid it in. Hine couldn't get the three. And again, it's 10 to five. Rose Holman has scored possession after possession on the offensive side. That one off the putback by Burnham. 
hard drive, and there it is again. That's a really good hard take by Kayla Bruner, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. Bruner is obviously a little quicker than Rose Burnham, and so Burnham has to kind of be aware of that and be careful. That's Obviously, that's the first foul of the game, but you don't want to be in foul trouble early for Rose Bur Burnham. 10 to 6 is the score as she puts the first free throw in. And we want to thank Crane Credit Union, the Hamilton Center, Indiana Army National Guard, Labor Link, Lentz Pharmacy, Sonic Drive In, Union Health, and York Automotive for sponsoring this evening's ball game here at Rose Holman. Rowan Hind with the basketball to Burnham. And again, good ball movement. Nice trigger on the inside. Shots up and mm. didn't get the foul call either was Jordan Barlow as she had it deep and a lot of body contact, but she couldn't draw the foul. With the drive for Franklin and the shot going up in the corner is Bailey Gibson couldn't get it to go and the rebound comes out. Fought for. Held ball. Possession arrow favors Rose Holman. Nice scrappy play there. 5.45 left to go in the first period. It's 10 to 6. Rose Holman with the lead. Substitution in as we have uh, Myra Randolph coming into the ball game for Rose Holman along with number 40, and that's Allie Fruits or Allie Foltz. Full court pressure being applied by the Grizzlies. Token pressure there to get the ball in. Now let's see if Rose Holman works their offense. Nice pass inside. Fultz with the shot. And she, when she comes in, Fultz has been able to score on a consistent basis when we've watched her. It's 12 to 6. Rose Holman with the lead. Well, Fultz was in perfect position. We've seen that quite a bit tonight for a few of the Rose engineers. Right there near the basket. With a drive, kick out, shot open in the corner, up and no good. Rebound comes out to Kaylin Jester. Jester. Quick move up front is Jamie Baum to Jester. Feed down inside to Fultz, tied up. They're going to call it held ball. Possession arrow favors the Grizzlies. And with that, we'll have a timeout called on the floor. We'll take one as well. 4.56 left to go in the first period. It's 12 to 6. Home. It can be the family farm, a small town, or a busy city. But wherever you call home, we are where you are. Ready to serve you and your family with compassionate health care of the highest quality. Serving the Wabash Valley since 1892. Union Health. Healthier. Together. The Big Finish sales event is on now at your Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram on U.S. Highway 40 in Brazil. Choose from over 500 new and certified pre-owned vehicles today. This month only, lock in 0% financing and no payment for 90 days. New Jeep Cherokee as low as $229 per month. New Ram 1500, $359 per month. Or sell us your vehicle for top dollar. Unwrap the savings at yorkcdjrbrazil.com. Stop by today and we'll show you why we're not number one, you are. We're not number one, you are. You're number one at York. You are watching HCAC Women's Basketball at rolls Holman on the Indiana Sports Network. And we want to thank uh, York Automotive. They're a transportation specialist with five locations in Brazil, Greencastle, Crawfordsville, and Plainfield. Kicked. Possession arrow, and again, it's Franklin Lady Grizzly basketball on the inbounds. Libby Baker will step up to try to throw this one in bounds. A lot of substitutions, as you said earlier. Shelby Anderson with the basketball. Kicks it back out and around. They'll give it up to Sarah O'Day. O'Day, cross court to Hanauer. Hanauer with a spinning drive on the inside. Can't get it to go. Rebound comes out. Fought for and picked up by Jamie Baum. Baum, cross court pass. It's stolen Ooh. away. Nice play by Baker. Libby has it, she'll pull it up and set it up for Franklin. Over to the left side, three court, three, three point shot up and no good by Sarah O'Day. And Rose Holman will walk the ball up the floor. 
Yeah, Jamie Baum, I like the way mm -hmm. she handles the ball. Her, she has the ball right now, 23 in the bottom of your screen. Does not play like a freshman. Shots up and no good. Rebound and it's fought for, picked up by the Grizzlies. Lead pass and they'll get it up and try to set the offense. Baker Gri with it. Grizzlies with a much smaller lineup on the floor right at the moment. With the drive, shots up and no good by Bailey Gibson. And the rebound comes out to Kalen Jester. Pass, turnover again, and that'll be Franklin basketball. About three turnovers in a row for Rose Allman there. That's very uncharacteristic. It is uncharacteristic, especially when they started as, as well as they did uh, at the beginning of the, the first quarter. Those first three or four minutes, they were pretty hot. But uh, Franklin is not hot. They're shooting a uh, a chilly 22% from the field here in this quarter. Well, you've got to have open looks, and right now Rose Holman has really stymied their ability to see the basket. That's exactly right. Good pressure defense by Rose, and Franklin does not move as much as I think you would like to see them. Shot up. No good. A rebound comes out to Loudon. Loudon gets it up, and again, no, nothing's going to fall right now for the Grizzlies. Hind with the drive, feed down inside. That's a pretty play and an assist to Hind. Barlow scores it easier. Her third basket of the evening. It's 14 to six. Rose Holman with an eight-point lead. Yeah, Barlow leading all scores with six and just getting some easy buckets. Uh, Rose so far in this first quarter. And challenging defensively as well. Loudon into the ball game and with the basketball. And again, multiple players for Franklin. Rose Holman's keeping a pretty consistent group, but really causing all kinds of trouble. Tough shot clock violation on Franklin. Rose Holman takes possession. Yeah, again, excellent defense there by Rose Holman. Uh, Franklin was able to get a shot, but did not hit the rim. So the shot clock went down, and Rose Holman takes possession here with two minutes to go, up 14 to six in this first quarter. Rowan Hine with the basketball, trying to set the offense. Looking at the back door cut, they got it. Oh, Shot the oh, in, she scores it. Woo. Kalen Jester off the assist from Rowan Hine. Score the basket, she'll go to the line. Beautiful play by Kalen Jester, the junior out of Minnesota, New Brighton, Minnesota. I wonder if Kalen thinks it's cold outside. <laughs> and I wonder what the coldest. I will tell you, I was school. talking to one of the Rose students outside. And I'm like, so, so where are you from? She's like, Arizona. We don't have weather like this in Arizona. <laughs> she just kept going, it is cold. <laughs> it's, it's cold everywhere except here. <laughs> and as uh, Rose Holman is just torrid right now from the field, it's 17 to six. Uh, Rose Holman with an 11 point lead. Two minutes left to go in the first period. Yeah, with Jester being from Minnesota, she probably thinks it's you know a balmy day here <laughs> in the Wabash Valley. It's, uh, I think it was 20 degrees when I drove in about an hour ago. With the drive inside and stuffed by Jamie Baum. Shot just rejected, and it went off the Franklin player out of bounds. It'll be Rose Allman basketball. Full court pressure being applied. Baum will bring the ball up. Looking inside, they'll feed it down in again. Shots up and good by Jordan Barlow as she is having a tremendous night. And uh, I believe that's nine. 19 to six, Rose Holman with the lead. And yeah, Franklin just does not have an answer so far for that down low pass on the blocks to Rose Holman. And they're just getting some easy buckets here in this first quarter. Turnover again, gives the basketball up. And Myra Randolph will bring it up and set the offense for the Fighting Engineers. With the drive, shots up and good. A floater by Jamie Baum and she scores. It's 21 to six. Rose Holman with the lead, one minute left to go in the first period, one minute. Looking, almost double dribbling the basketball, they'll feed it down inside to Walker. Shot goes up and a rise, turnover out the open court. Bomb with the ball, drives, shoots, doesn't get it to go, rebound to Hine, kicks it up to Randolph, 
and they'll call a traveling violation. That's awful good offense except for the travel. <laughs> oh, a lot of fun watching Rose Hallman play off that turnover. Yeah. 21 to 6, 37 seconds left to go in the first period. Baum tried to get the foul. Didn't quite happen, and Rose just couldn't quite get the shot off, but almost another turnover there for Franklin. So far, Rose has five turnovers in this first quarter. Franklin has three. Well, early in the season, uh, we were listening to uh, coaches talk about Rowan Hine. They said, just wait till she's able to play, and we'll see what happens. And the Division I transfer has had a tremendous impact on Rose Holman's offense, not just from the scoring aspect, but as you've seen, several assists in this one. Eight seconds left to, left to go in the first period. Hine, she'll drive. She'll take it to the basket, and she Ooh. shoots it, and she gets fouled. She'll go to the line. Two and a half seconds left to go on the clock. There was question whether, yeah, she's going to get two shots for sure, but she was pleading the case to the official that she was going up, which she was, to shoot. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, Rowan was... A little unsure, but 21 to 6. Hine gets the first free throw. Again, two and a half seconds left to go here in the first period. You want to thank the Crane Credit Union, Hamilton Center, Indiana Army National Guard, Labor Link, Lynn's Pharmacy, Sonic Drive In, Union Health, and York Automotive, all for sponsoring this evening's ball game. That shot at half court doesn't go, and we'll go to period number two. It's Rose Holman 23, Franklin 6. Wherever life takes you, whatever stage, anything that you need, no matter the season, Getting there together. We are ready when you are. Crane cares. The news says Gen Z is struggling. I've got news for them. I wait tables, but last week I built a field hospital. I put out a forest fire. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. I've saved lives and led a team on patrol. I serve. While well, I go to school full time. While I work full time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. You are watching HCAC Women's Basketball at Rolls Holman on the Indiana Sports Network. If I crave some. 23 to 6 and 23 points in one quarter for Rose Holman. That's a huge amount of scoring for the Fighting Engineers as uh, Boy, they take is. that lead at the end of the first period. Just real quick, they were 10 of 14, 71 percent in that first quarter field goal. They only shot one three-pointer, Rose did, and they were 0 for 1. But overall, a fantastic quarter. Rowan Hine misses a shot in the, in the corner as Franklin College went to a 2-3 zone and they're having trouble. Ball's tipped out of bounds. It'll be Rose Holman basketball. You know, Team well, rebound Herb, there. Herb, yeah. And speaking of rebounds, Rose Holman led that first quarter. 14 rebounds to Franklin's five. Well, and you can tell it's just a domination right now in the first quarter. Jester will drive, kicks it outside over Hine, open for three, puts it up, doesn't get it, tipped out. That's a solid hustle play. It's going to be a foul called on Jamie Baum, but really good hustle play. She it went was. after the ball quite well, just went through somebody's back. Again, that has to be the best quarter that Rose Holmes <laughs> played maybe all year. As uh, 23 points on the board, but more importantly, six points given up defensively. Exactly. Caused all kinds of problems for Franklin College. Again, another great job on a, def or a defensive block out that time by Jordan Barlow as she draws the foul on Jasmine Walker on that play underneath. 
Yeah, anytime you can hold the team to six points in a quarter, I don't care what level you're at, playing at, but uh, that's a good defensive effort. You should be leading. Jester feeds it up. Bomb hits the three-pointer. Jamie Bomb for three, and it's 26 to six. Throws first three-pointer of the night. Hind with the rebound. Heads up. We got numbers. Goes there, there feeds down inside. Bomb with the shot, doesn't get it to go. Tipped around, fought for, and picked up by the Grizzlies. O'Day travels, kick, or kicks it back outside to Baker. And it wasn't O'Day, by the way. That was Barnes in. <laughs> oh, oh, oh what, what? traveling violation will give the ball back to Rose Holman as they say Matty Barnes, the freshman from Indianapolis, traveled with the basketball. Another substitution, Avery Phelps, the first time we've seen Avery into the ball game, a 6'2 freshman from Louisville, Indiana, is into the ball game. 26 to six, a 20 point Rose Holman lead in the second period. I think Barnes makes the 10th Franklin Grizzly in the ball game. Bomb to Jester for the bomb. She can't get it up and in. And the rebound comes out to Franklin College. With the drive, almost turned it over. And the shot up outside by Nick. She can't get it to go. Rebound comes out to Rose Burnham. Rowan Hine to Jester. Jester will drive. Now she'll pull it up, give it up to Hine. Hind with a crossover, she'll drive, has an open look, bomb for three, got it, Jamie bomb for three. It's a nice stroke there by Jamie, set up at the top of the key. Franklin's going to learn real quick, you cannot leave her open like that. 29-6, to six, Rose Holman with the lead, seven minutes left to go here in the second period. Feed on the inside, and it's stuffed. Rose Burnham with the block on the inside as she was able to stop Avery Phelps' shot. And again, Rose Holman playing very good defense. They're up by 23 here in the second period. And Burnham with the block, and then Barlow was right there to, to grab the ball and cause the, the jump ball, which goes to Franklin. Trying to put the ball inside. They weren't able to do it. Good ball rotation, but solid defense. There's solid defense by Rose Holman. They're all over it. Baker with it. She'll drive and throws it up. Can't get it to go. Rebound comes out to Bomb. Now loose ball ensues. Picked up by Hine. Hine in the open court. Two on one. Pass inside. Jester couldn't handle the pass. Now she'll feed it inside, and they'll get the foul called. As Barlow went up, and she's fouled, she'll go to the line to shoot two. I tell you, I love the way these ladies get down the floor, Herb, and again, <laughs> that was way, you know, the ball was way ahead, but uh, Barlow was was trailing and was and never gave up on it and was right there to get the foul called. Well, they, they consistently look for the trailer, that, that yeah. trail cutter, which a lot of times is open. Barlow got it that time. She misses both the free throws, but a really nice play. She just didn't get the finish. Yep. 29 to six, again, a 23 point lead for Rose Holman with 6.30 left to go in the second period. Outside, they'll give it up to Bailey. Over to Baker, looking at that cross court. They'll give it up again. A three point shot is up and no good. And rebound up and it's blocked. Jester with the block and a foul called off the rebound as Hine was taking the basketball towards the other end and she's fouled. Rose Holman will have possession of the basketball in the backcourt. That was really, I'm not gonna say a smart foul, but that stopped a fast break opportunity for Rose Holman. It did, it was kind of a frustration foul, I believe. Uh, you know, Franklin is yet to score in this quarter, uh, but you're right, it, it stopped a, a fast break and let's see if Rose can set up their offense and, and get another bucket here. Feed inside to Fultz. Now back outside. Bomb for three. Can't get it to go. Rebound to Hine. 
Rose Hallman with another quality rebound. Hine pumps. She'll try to pull up, almost traveled with it. Gives it back up. Hine pump, pulls up, had her arm hit, but no call. She'll put it up again, gets it. Rowan Hine just stays with it, gets the basket. It's 31 to six, Rose Holman. Franklin with the basketball. Libby Baker in the front court. To O'Day, back to Baker, to O'Day. They're trying to feed the ball inside. Pump and drive in there. They're not going to give her the call. They don't give it there either. Wow. Tipped around and picked up by Jordan Barlow. And Rose Holman is on the break again. Feed down inside. Fultz pulls it back out to Jester. Cross court. Almost threw it away to Hine. Back inside to Fultz. She'll put it up. Doesn't get it. Rebound. And then they'll get the shot up. And she'll go to the line. And that's Jamie Baum, it looked like. And a timeout's been called. We'll take one as well. It's 31-6. to Rose Hallman with the lead. Treatment for those with mental illnesses and addiction issues has evolved over the years. In the late 1960s, Indiana's mental health system began to take shape. From 1971 to 2021, Hamilton Center has touched the lives of thousands of people in central and west central Indiana. We are committed to the latest therapies to improve the quality of life for those with mental illnesses. Treatment works. Recovery is possible. And thank you, Indiana. Hey, this is Todd Hine with LaborLink. The federal unemployment benefits have ended. However, there has never been a better job market in history. This puts you in an incredible position. Go to GoLaborLink.com and apply now. We have many jobs available, but they will fill up fast due to demand. Hey, take advantage of the job market and start work right away with LaborLink. This game is presented by the Indiana Army National Guard. And we want to thank our transportation specialists for Indiana Sports Network. That's York Automotive with five locations in Brazil, Greencastle, Crawfordsville, and Plainfield. For team stats, when we're looking at those kinds of things, again, field goal percentage. Uh, Franklin has shot two out of 26 shots. And they've made two out of 26. Rose Hallman, 13 out of 23. So you're looking at field goal percentage, 56% for Rose Hallman, 7% for Franklin. And the only place that Rose Hallman's really not done well is at the line. They've just missed their third free throw. Yeah, the third in a row, I believe. So free throw percentage has not been good, just at 50% as Barlow could, oh, got down one out of those two shots. It's 32 to six, Rose Holman with the lead. Again, they were so hot that first quarter, at, you know, shooting at 71%. They really knew they had to come back down a little bit here in this second quarter, and they have, but fortunately for Rose, or unfortunately for Franklin, they have not uh, gotten any better in this second quarter. They are still scoreless at six points, and Rose has the largest lead of the game at 26 points. 26 point lead, there's four minutes and 20 seconds left to go in the second period. Rose Burnham at, with the basketball, turns, looks at it. Bomb for three! Jamie Baum hits another three pointer, it's 35 to six. It's Jamie to double digits at 11. Again, there's an open look for three and not able to find anything with it. Rebound to Rowan Hine. Hine tries to feed it, picked up by Burnham. Back to Hine. Feed inside, they'll give it up to Burnham. She puts it up, can't get it. Or excuse me, and they're gonna call an offensive foul. I don't know what they got that one on. I think they got it on uh, Burnham. Jordan Barlow had the ball in the low post. I don't think she used a clear out, did she? Wait a second. Hmm. They're saying it's on Rose Burnham, is what they said. They said she moved her out of the way on the way towards okay. rebounding position, and that turnover gives the basketball to Franklin College. 35-6 to six is our score. 29-point lead here in the second period. 
Franklin has not scored in the second period. Rose Holman playing a little bit different defense right now as they've gone to typically a man team has gone to a zone and he may go back on that one. Fouls picked up by Barlow in the low post and going to the line for Franklin College will be Sarah O'Day, the sophomore from Avon. Yeah, Coach Prevo, you're right, it may go back, but when you're up 29, you can afford to to switch things up a little bit. Well, and, well, and, and give somebody true. something else to look at right. and give yourself <laughs> something else to look at, too. Exactly. I mean, playing a different style defense. There's the first two points of the quarter. It's 35-8 to eight as O'Day hits those two free throws. Rowan Hine to Jester, feed down inside to Barlow. She'll put it up and in, nice. and that's just the old UCLA high post. It is. Feed the ball in the low post. Uh, that's what uh, Bill Walton used to do. He used to play the high post and feed it down inside, and they'd score off that uh, play. 37 to eight, a 29 point lead for Rose Holman. Again, pressure in your face, tough to hit anything. Rose Holman has been rebounding well. That one is picked up by O'Day. She puts the shot up, can't get it to go. Rebound, it's fought for and picked up by Rose Holman's Jordan Barlow. That's her seventh rebound of the game for Barlow, leading all Fultz players. With that five foot turnaround, couldn't get it to go, and the rebound comes out to Franklin. Driving down with it is Hauner. They're going out. Hunter with the basketball in the low post. She'll turn around, puts it right back at her, but they're going to call the foul. Foul will go against Jester. Kaylin Jester from New Brighton, Minnesota. And you mentioned before she's probably going to think this is a, a nice warm gym. <laughs> and we're all thinking this is pretty cold weather here in Indiana. We had that, That's right. that big cold spell hit. There were about a 35-mile-an-hour wind today when I went out to my car. Yeah, and it I'm was thinking, very wow. windy but I would not be surprised if we don't see her, you know, Kaylin walking in shorts outside, you know, to the <laughs> dorm after this game. <laughs> well, I know it's been warm. Shots that free throws up and good by Georgia Hanauer. Uh, from Hartford City, Indiana, the 5'8 freshman gets her points on the board. And again, it's 37-9. to nine. Rose Holman with the lead. 2'12 left to go in the second period. Rowan Hine gives it up. Jamie Baum to Jester. Hine open in the corner. She'll pump, drive, cross court, open nice. for Baum for three. She can't get it to go. Rebound comes out to Franklin. Real nice look at the nice ball movement there by Hind Baum. Shots up and no good. Again, Jester with the rebound. Hind with the basketball. 140 left to go in the first half. Hind crossing over, driving, puts the shot up. She's fouled. She'll go to the line and shoot two shots. You know, Herbert, you hate to... to even mention this, but you know Franklin is 0 for 16 here in this quarter. Uh, two of 32, just in the game from the field goal range. They've had three points in this quarter, all from the free throw line. And the shot goes up and good by Rowan Hine. Again, we want to thank Crane Credit Union, Hamilton Center, Indiana Army National Guard, Labor Link. Lynn's Pharmacy, Sonic Drive-In, Union Health, and York Automotive, all sponsors for Rose Holman basketball this evening. It's 38 to nine, Rose Holman with the lead. Feed on the inside to Walker. She'll turn around, try to put the shot up. It's blocked. Barlow with the block. Shots up by Hine for three. She doesn't get it to go. Tipped out, and the fast break opportunity for Franklin College. They'll kick it out. Open look for three by Bruner. She can't get it to go. Rebound and a reverse layup. It doesn't go. Rebound. Shots up and good by Walker. First basket of the quarter. First field goal of the quarter 
for Franklin is a basket by Jasmine Walker with 59 seconds left to go in the first half. A put back basket at that. That, that places the field goal percentage for Franklin. They have shot, they are one for 20 from the floor in the second period. One for 20. They are eight percent for the game at this point. That free throw goes in, it's 38 to 12. Rose Holman with a substantial lead, but more importantly, it's just defensively is where they've been doing a good job. Maya Randolph with the drive, she lost it, it'll go out of bounds, it'll still be Rose Holman basketball. 15 seconds left to go on the shot clock. 44 seconds left to go in the first half. Triggering it inbounds is Hine. Rowan Hine, they'll give it back out to Baum. Hine looking inside. For Burnham on the crosser, and they threw it away. Kind of a lazy pass. Rowan should have shot there. that one. Yeah, she, she should really not have given the ball up, just shoot it. She was in a good angle there where she could have easily banked it off the board, but... She was trying to be nice and make that extra pass. Here at the end of the second quarter, Peyton Miller has entered the ball game for Rose Holman. I want to give a shout out to her. The uh, sophomore from Clovis, California is seeing some playing time and she's been in for the last couple minutes and really done a nice job there defensively. Again, 38 to 12, Rose Holman with the lead. 14 seconds left to go. Here in the first half, Kayla Bruner at the line, a 5'7 sophomore from Baghdad, Kentucky. Hmm. No, I haven't been there. Usually <laughs> I get the question. I was going to ask. You, my, you've been you there, know, you've... One of the other guys that, that we broadcast with always asks me, well, have you been there? <laughs> Tell me where that one is. Ten seconds left to go in the half. Rowan Hine with the basketball drive. Nice feed. Shots up and Ooh, she got nice. it to go. That's Peyton Miller with the basket at the end of the first half 40 to 14 Rose Holman with the lead going in at halftime as Peyton Miller puts in her first shot of the evening and with that we'll go to halftime again here from Rose Holman on a nice cold evening here late in uh, in this first week of January as somebody said you know it gets darker all the time and the only place it's been bright has been on the scoreboard for Rose Holman 40 to 14 at halftime. We'll be back for more here on Indiana Sports Network. The city of Brazil was founded in 1866. By 1876, there were two schools, seven dry goods stores, two hardware stores, four churches, and five drug stores. One of those drug stores is still there today, Lynn's Pharmacy. Lynn's Pharmacy has grown from a small neighborhood drug store to a modern pharmacy, offering prescriptions and medical equipment with old-fashioned values and unparalleled service. You can even step back in time and visit Lynn's Soda Parlor here at Lynn's Pharmacy, downtown Brazil. At Indiana Land and Lifestyle, we go to great depths to list and sell your property. <laughs> <laughs> if your agent isn't willing to go to these depths, six acres with bass, to list and sell your property, don't you think that's a little fishy? And there's fish everywhere. Oh! And snapping turtles! For all your Indiana land needs, check us out at indianalandandlifestyle.com. Oh, that's gross. I'm Ryan Luce with State Farm in Clinton, Indiana. We're here to help life go right for you and your family. Our team takes pride in helping families in the Wabash Valley. With all of their insurance and financial needs. We are here to make your claims process simple. Like a good neighbor. You're watching College Sports on the Indiana Sports Network. Presented by the Indiana Army National Guard. Well and welcome back to Holbert Arena on the campus of Rose Holman Institute of Technology. It's 40 to 14. Rose Holman with the lead. We're kind of in shock here because honestly, we these really two are. teams are pretty evenly matched going into this ball game. And all of a sudden, it was 23 to 6 at the end of the first quarter. And Rose Holman just completely took Franklin out of their offense. They did just from the opening tip, they took them out of their offense. Just the the pressure defense that Rose Holman has played has been tremendous. Uh, 
you know, we didn't think it could get much better after that first quarter. And then came the second quarter. <laughs> and, uh, you know, again, again, first quarter, Franklin shoots two of 16 from the field. And second quarter, they are one of 20 from the field. Um, so just, yeah, as you mentioned, you know, on the pregame show, we talked all about how both of these teams, when you look statistically, are very, very even. But uh, clearly that's, I don't know what Franklin team where you were looking at, but the, that's not the one that the same one that we've seen all these stats coming into tonight. It's definitely a different team, and uh, but kudos to Rose Holman. They're uh, just playing a, just some great defense and they're playing a very solid offensive game as well. Well, and when you look, the the key players for Rose Holman have been the key players in the ball game. I mean, yeah. you look yeah. at the. Uh, it, Rowan Hines just consistently moves the basketball well. Whether she scores it or not, she runs the whole show. Yeah, and exactly. It's, and, it's, and it's not fancy or anything. No. She just plays basketball the way you and I probably think it should be played. Right. You know, and she leads uh, both teams with six assists. She has seven points, um, three or four from the line, six rebounds, two steals, a block. Well, okay. if you look at yeah. that, it's, it's a triple-double. I mean, if you double those totals from first half to second yeah, half, hey, she's, she's a triple well double. Yeah, she's on her way. Right. I mean, she's, she's just, that's a tremendous game. It's yep. not that she scored all the points. She distributes, she rebounds, she does everything well. She's not turning the ball over. All those things you want somebody to do as a leader, she's exactly. doing them. And then when you have put the ball in the low post and the players that Rose Holman has off the fast break or the pushed uh, secondary fast break, they're scoring points at will off yeah. of the easy, easy opportunities for layups. Well, that's where you get, you know, Barlow's got 11 points. Uh, Burnham has four. Uh, and you get, you know, we saw that uh, five, six times and where they get in that high-low post, get it down low, and for an easy bucket. Um, and Franklin just has not had a, an answer for that defensively. Uh, or offensively, <laughs> for that matter. Uh, but, you know, and also you get uh, Baum with 11 points as well, three or four from three-point range uh, to lead. She's the only one who's had, had hit a three-pointer, and she's hit three of them uh, for Rose. So, again, a fun team to watch. <laughs> and uh, obviously <laughs> they got to be having fun in this first half, uh, and I'm sure Coach Brevo is uh, not talking them up in, in halftime because you can still got some work to do, but – uh, we know that Franklin can come out and, and potentially can can shoot the ball. We, we've well, they've had you know, some open looks at three, but a lot of rush looks. And all of a sudden, when you find yourself behind and you're shooting threes, the threes are a little shorter. Yep. They're a little rushed. You you know you're used to seeing pressure right away, and that's when you rush those shots. You can see they're just not in any kind of fluid motion at all their shooting motion is out of whack on everybody they're rush either rushing shots or or they have somebody's hand in the face and we've seen multiple block shots especially in a low post and they're almost scared to shoot the ball there now right and they just don't want to do it so rose holman has really gotten defensive pressure enough that that franklin is having a tremendous trouble just shooting the basketball with nobody on them yeah and you know once you get to that 15 20 point deficit you know as a player you want to to try to make that up as quickly as you can but unfortunately there's not a five point shot <laughs> or you know in in college basketball <laughs> so uh, as a coach you know you just got to keep telling them to chip away at it possession by possession and um, it's going to be again and it's important for franklin to come out and, and try to win you know a minute uh, two minute three minutes here in this third quarter to get off to a good start to to try to again chip into this large lead that rose holman's bill well and it is a large lead and one of those things that's going to be nice for coach john prevo is he has players that maybe haven't played a lot during this season and we've seen a couple of those miller getting in the ball game um, you know, different players that he possibly could use. He'll use the whole bench. He'll be able to rotate people around and not have to uh, extend playing time for players that may be banged up, bruised, have some kind of a minor thing. And, and you're getting those right. at this point in the season. You may find players with one or two, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, a little sure. bit of an ankle or a knee issue or whatever, and you don't have to put those in harm's way. They don't have to play as hard they really have to play at all 
and when you're able to do that you're able to get healthier in the process of these so these these kind of games are really important if you can get up on somebody like this and play it all the way through that's really good for your team and good for your morale as well. Yeah, it, for sure. You know, Rose Holman in that first half, they played eight players, six out of the eight scored. And you look at Franklin, they played uh, 13 players and uh, only four uh, of those 13 actually scored. Um, but that's unusual <laughs> for them. Exactly, it, it, yeah. It, the whole thing <laughs> is, is unusual for Franklin in, in how they've scored the basketball for throughout the entire year. Uh, Franklin has not played like this. This is, has to be their low point right now. And for Rose Holman, this may be the high point of the year as far as how well they played, especially in that at the end of the first quarter. Yeah. The end of that that first that final three minutes of the end of the first quarter, they were just on it. They, they, were. they could do whatever they, they wanted. And you know, we talked pregame about you know the layoff. This is the first game that both teams have played in two two and a half weeks, and what that would look like, and it. Uh, for Franklin, it looks like it's been two, two and a half months <laughs> since they yeah. played. Uh, but for Rose, it looks like they haven't missed a beat. Um, and so kudos to Rose Holman for, for, again, coming out on a hot start uh, on a cold night, <laughs> late night at that. And uh, let's hope they can continue that into this second half and into the third and fourth quarters. Well, we want to thank the Indiana Army National Guard for helping you sponsor uh, our college basketball here on Indiana Sports Network. And it's halftime. Again, 40-14. to 14. Rose Holman with the lead over Franklin. We'll be back for more here on Indiana Sports Network. You're watching College Sports on the Indiana Sports Network, presented by the Indiana Army National Guard. Welcome to Sonic. May I take your order? One grape cheeseburger. I'm on it. Grape cheeseburger almost ready. On my way. Someone pass me the crepe sauce. Almost ready on the burger. One Sonic crepe cheeseburger. At Lynn's Pharmacy, we're more than just your pharmacists. We're your neighbors. Our kids go to the same schools. We eat at the same restaurants. We sit next to you in church. When I listen to a symptom. When I fill a prescription. When I offer advice, I'm not just helping a customer. I'm helping my neighbor and a friend. My name is Lynn Hofstetter, and I'm the proud owner of Lynn's Pharmacy, a modern pharmacy with old-fashioned values and personal service, dedicated to keeping you, your family, and our community healthy since 1872. Here at Lynn's Pharmacy, downtown Brazil. This program is a copyrighted production of Indiana Sports Network and cannot be shown, reproduced, or redistributed in any way or in any form without prior written permission from Indiana Sports Network. Home. It can be the family farm, a small town, or a busy city. But wherever you call home, we are where you are. ready to serve you and your family with compassionate health care of the highest quality. Serving the Wabash Valley since 1892. Union Health. Healthier together. The big finish sales event is on now at your Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram on US Highway 40 in Brazil. Choose from over 500 new and certified pre-owned vehicles today. This month only, lock in 0% financing and no payment for 90 days. New Jeep Cherokee as low as $229 per month. New Ram 1500, $359 per month. Or sell us your vehicle for top dollar. Unwrap the savings at YorkCDJRBrazil.com. Stop by today and we'll show you why we're not number one, you are. We're not number one, you are. You're number one at York. You are watching HCAC Women's Basketball at Rolls-Holman on the Indiana Sports Network. 
again, when we look at statistics on this one, they're pretty ugly for Franklin. There's just no way are. around it. Three for 36 from the field for the entire first half. You're not going to win a ball game or even be in one. For Rose Hallman, they're 16 of 29. Uh, that's 55% for the half. And when you shoot like that, you're going to score 35, 40 points. They've got 40 points on the board, and they could have had more. Um, they, they played <laughs> they very well. Uh, free throw percentage, 55% uh, for Rose Holman. That's one thing. They're only five of nine. You add an, ex an extra three or four points, and again, you're talking 45 points in the first half. You would be on an extremely good scoring average. But even now, they're doing very well rebounding-wise. 24 to 11 on the defensive end for uh, Rose Holman. Uh, offensive rebounds, there have been a lot more for Franklin, but statistically, and I, this is the other bad part, uh, they have nine offensive rebounds to four. Right. So they're leading in offensive rebounds, Franklin is, but that's because they've missed almost every shot. So you miss all those shots, there's more opportunities for a missed offensive rebound. That's why they have nine. Um, Rose Hallman has led from the get-go. Uh, they scored early and often. Their largest lead was 29, and uh, it was 38 to 9 at that point. It's now 40 to 14. Again, um, you know, you look almost everything you want to see. P points in the paint, 24 to 4, and that's where it really is. The Franklin has not gotten the ball in the paint to score it. Rose Holman has scored at will inside the paint. Yeah, they've scored over, obviously, <laughs> half of their points have come from in the paint. Rose Holman, you know, one thing they are going to have to work on is that turnover margin. You know, Franklin had four turnovers in that first half. Rose Holman had seven. So if you want to get nitpicky <laughs> on some things, and I'm sure it's Coach turnover. Prevo did, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's that turnover uh, margin. Again, seven is a little lower than what they're averaging. They're averaging about ten, I believe, per half. Uh, Rose Holman is so coming in I think you would take seven uh, but Franklin uh, winning in that category but that's uh, that's not the right category you want to win in um, as we know you want to win on the scoreboard and right at the moment uh, with about 30 seconds to go here in halftime we know that the engineers are up big 40 to 14 and I fully expect her them to to come out strong again here in this third quarter with some pressure defense and just kind of keep it keep it going, pedal to the metal, so to speak, here in this third quarter and uh, and really put the, uh, a, a dagger kind of in the Grizzlies in the third quarter and then maybe you can uh, play a lot of different players and uh, ideas and zones and whatnot in the fourth quarter, but, but we'll see. I'm sure Franklin uh, obviously would never like to see another half of basketball that they just play. And again, Rose Holman scoring 21 points in, they say 21 points in the first quarter, 19 in the second. Um, uh, again, shooting 69% from the, in the first quarter, 43% in the second quarter. Rose Holman with the basketball to start the second half. Rowan Hine working off the double high screen. They're going to roll. Rose Burnham get, almost had a chance and could have thrown it in there. They're trying to get the ball in the low post. Can't do it. Jester feeds down inside with it. Shots blocked, and a rebound comes out to O'Day. O'Day with a block shot, and she'll go coast to coast down. She'll kick it back outside to Baker. Baker on the drive, and they'll have the legs stuck out. Burnham will get called for the foul. It'll be a common foul, side out of bounds for Franklin. That'll be Burnham's third personal foul. I think Coach Prevo's going to substitute. Looks like Miller coming back in. And try, I think they're doing that just to see if she's all right. But, yeah, three fouls right away. They want to get Rose out of the game for a little bit and kind of save her towards the end to see what happens. Ball's tipped around and stolen away. Nope, picked back up. Baker with the hustle play picked up the basketball. Nix drives, shoots. She'll go to the line. Jessica Nix, the senior from Martinsville, Indiana. And for Nix, she was one for seven. She has three points in the ball game. Averaging in double figures. Gets that first shot up and in. 
And again, I, I think you're going to see some fight out of Franklin College right away here, see if they yeah, can cut into this lead. I think you're right. They're clearly showing that early. Double violation mm -hmm. should be a jump ball, which means it's going to go out of bounds to Franklin. Yeah, it should be out of bounds Franklin under the basket, I believe. But the officials are talking. So jump ball over. out of bounds. There is no shot. That's correct. Helps when Good I used call. to officiate for 20 years. It is. It does help. Yeah, it didn't say I was any good. About it, I didn't say I was any good at it. Well, I just said I used to do it. As long as you knew the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Franklin with the basketball. They'll feed it out inside. Oh, and oh, again. We got travel or double dribble there. Double dribble. Walker had a chance there and. Walker's had a chance to put the ball in the basket from the low post and really hasn't had a chance to get her hands on it much. Yeah, you 40 to, yeah. Franklin's, you know, M.O. this start this quarter is to come down low and and it, it's worked as far as picking up fouls, but. Bombed to Hine and Hine dribbled it right off her foot and fell down. She's like, oh, that didn't feel good. No, that's <laughs> not what she had visioned as she was making that drive but couple turnovers for Rose Holman don't be surprised if you get a timeout if something out like that happens again nine minutes left to go here in the third period it's 40 to 15 and they're going to call a hand check foul out in front that'll go against Jamie Baum Baum's third as well Looking inside, should have been a travel violation. Shuffled them, nice follow that time by Jessica Nix. She just kept after it, put it she up did. and in. And a quick three points for Jessica. Hine, fall away, doesn't get it, rebound. Shots up by Barlow, doesn't get it, rebound again, and she'll go to the line. She could end up with a double-double simply by those rebounds she's had on her own shot there the last couple of them. <laughs> She's got to be able to do something else that way. And we're really laughing at this because in the first half, those were all going in. Yeah, and they were. This half, they didn't. 40 to 17, a 23 point lead. It's been as high as 29. Barlow has 11 points, nine rebounds now. So one rebound away from a double double. Got that first free throw in. You know, Ooh. I was beginning to wonder. Herb, if it was this basket, <laughs> because this is the basket obviously Franklin was he trying to score on in that first period, first half. 42-17, 8.30 left to go in the third period. Baker with a basketball, quick drive to the hole, puts it up, can't get it to go. Rebound comes out, and guess who gets it? <laughs> that gives her the double-double. It sure does. Jennifer Barlow, their 10th rebound of the night. Maya Randolph, or Myra Randolph into the ball game, gives it up, and again, Barlow had it. Double team collapse, and they, they'll steal the basketball. Franklin with it. Again, another turnover. Multiple turnovers for, Fra for Rose Holman as Franklin has played much better here in the third period. Again, Franklin's been attacking down low. O'Day, excuse me, Sarah O'Day on the drive is fouled by uh, Rowan Hine. And now we've got a little bit of foul trouble on everybody. Yeah, that's the third foul for Rose this yep. quarter. And a timeout's been called. We'll take one as well. Rose Holman with the lead, 42 to 17. Wherever life takes you, whatever stage, anything that you need, no matter the season. Getting there together. We are ready when you are. Crane Cares. In Searcy, Arkansas, a young man says I love you for the first time but his girlfriend doesn't quite hear. In Franklin, Tennessee, 
a boy encounters his first pickle. And in Kyle, Texas, after a mission for tots, cousins realize they're a long way from Kyle, Texas. One day, many people, millions of orders. This is Howie Sonic. This game is presented by the Indiana Army National Guard. 42-17. Four fouls now on Rose Holman in the quarter. That means that Franklin will go to the line on the next foul in the bonus. Again, it's played a little different than men's basketball. That bonus happens uh, on that fifth foul. They're going to go to the line and shoot two shots. Yeah, and so far, actually, Franklin has gotten the majority of their points from the free throw line. Franklin with the basketball. And you can hear Coach Brevo starting to get a little riled up. And not that he doesn't need to be because sometimes in this it's a young team. Exactly. And you have a big lead, and all of a sudden you just kind of relax. And that's what took place here uh, the first few minutes of the third period. They're not playing at the same level. Rose Holman's not playing at the same level they did in the first and second period. Moving screen violation will have a turnover and give the basketball to Rose Holman. Yeah, as you mentioned, the intensity is just is not the same. And uh, credit Franklin with that. They've Franklin has turned up the intensity, obviously, a lot compared to that first half. And uh, Rose Holman just hasn't quite reacted uh, as you'd like to see them. Jester feeds it down inside to Fultz. Can't get it to go. And they're going to call the fall, the foul on Fultz. And going to the line will be. Number 23, that's Sarah O'Day. Peyton Miller's getting a lot of time here in this ball game too. She's been in the ball game here in the, sec in the third period and played pretty well. But at the same time, uh, that intensity level, as we talked about, is not there. The first and second period, Rose Holman, huge intensity level. Right now, that intensity level's kind of fallen off. Yes. O'Day puts that first free throw in. It's 42 to 18. Our video technician for today's ball game is Keith Lawson. Produced in, we are produced and directed by Tony Harper. Our camera operators, Kanan Harper, Noah Gastineau, and Dakota Schonsler. In this one, Rowan Hine with the basketball. Looking for the cutter. Can't get it. Gives it up to Jester. Jester with the drive, hard drive. She'll go to put it up. She's tied up. Give it up to Fultz. My goodness. Hine has it stolen away. O'Day on the drive. She'll drive, shoots. A lot of bodies crash to the floor now, and we'll have a held ball. Possession arrow favors Rose Holman. Boy, a lot of a lot of skin on skin contact there down near the Rose Holman basket, but no call. It's made and letting everybody play on this one, trying to run that clock down or something. It's 42 so, to yeah. 19. Rose Holman with the lead. 641 left to go in the third period. Officials would like to get home before midnight as well, I guess. Myra Randolph with a basketball crossover. She'll drive. Nice feet inside, mm. but she just missed her. Had an open look for uh, in this case Fultz, but just couldn't get her the basketball. With the drive is Jenna Loudon. She'll back it up and set the offense for Franklin College. Hands it off to Shelby Anderson. To O'Day, hooks it up and Ooh. doesn't get it to go. Rebound, tipped around and fought for. Fultz will have the basketball. They'll say it's a foul, they'll go the other direction. Allie Fultz, the sophomore from Centralia, Illinois, battling on that one. Helped picked up that rebound. Again, 42-19, six minutes left to go in the third period, and now full court pressure being applied by Franklin College. Yeah, Here Rose, we go. Rose is just playing, again, they're playing like they've been out for two weeks uh, this half. Hines splits it, drives. Fultz for two, got there it. There you go. Allie Fultz. That's a nice way to 
with the drive there and a go. steal by Hine. Lead pass to Fultz. Fultz. Fultz in the open court pump, and they're going to call the traveling violation. Said she stepped through on it. So that turnover will give the ball back to Franklin. A 44-19 score, 25-point lead. More substitutions for Franklin. Taylor James comes into the ball game. Although there was a turnover on Fultz you know, with that travel, it really was two good back-to-back -back possessions uh, for the engineers, the best two they've had here this third quarter. I'm s Georgia Hanauer, I'm sorry, is in the ball game. Kicked outside, shots up and good as Franklin College scores. And that one is 25, Sydney Doan, the freshman from Greencastle scores. Maya Randolph to Fultz, and they'll get it across the 10 second line. Hind feet inside, that's a nice play. Ooh. Go, a lot of foul contact, nothing called. Turnover, oh. turn back over. Loose ball all over the place. Jenna Loudon ends up with it. She'll kick it to the corner. Wide open shots. Up, no good. Rebound, fought for, and picked up by Jordan Barlow. It's kind, of a, hot, it's kind yeah. of a hot mess out there, Herb. But Pretty tough <laughs> things. A lot of contact, a lot of stuff going on. They're going to feed it inside to Barlow, and they're going to call the foul prior to the shot. 44-21, Rose Holman with the lead, and they're going to say it's out of bounds. Timeout's been called. Again, Rose Holman with the lead. You're watching Indiana Sports Network. The news says Gen Z is struggling. I've got news for them. I wait tables, but last week I built a field hospital. I put out a forest fire. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. I've saved lives and led a team on patrol. I serve. While I go to school full time. While I work full time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. Treatment for those with mental illnesses and addiction issues has evolved over the years. In the late 1960s, Indiana's mental health system began to take shape. From 1971 to 2021, Hamilton Center has touched the lives of thousands of people in central and west central Indiana. We are committed to the latest therapies to improve the quality of life for those with mental illnesses. Treatment works. Recovery is possible. And thank you, Indiana. You are watching HCAC Women's Basketball at Rolls Holman on the Indiana Sports Network. 44 21 is our score, 434 left to go here in the third period. Rose Holman with a basketball. And if Mrs. Robinson is watching this late at night, Super she fan. Is a super fan, yeah. Talking about that one, Jordan Barlow with the basket off the inbounds play, and Rose Holman needed that when the score's back up to 25 point lead for Rose Holman. Shelby Anderson into the ball game, and they're going to try to figure that one up. They got an open look for Hine, and nobody found her, and almost turned it over to Fultz. Now back over. And no. they did turn it over. Lazy passes, Boy, and I'm telling you, Prevo pass. is hot. On the sideline, he's like, yeah. go into the ball game. And they just sent him in. And here it comes. Five. We've been waiting all year for it. It's all five. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the, the just the all five, but for us, Nosa Igihan is in the ball game. So Nosa comes into the ball game. First time we've seen her all year. Yeah, number 54. And, and the engineers uh, on the far side there. Her freshman year, she played a lot. She's an outstanding athlete. And when I say that, uh, probably the best track athlete in the entire conference in multiple events. Yes. And um, just had a really good freshman year playing basketball. Wanted to concentrate a little bit more on her studies. Didn't play this last year. But this gives... Rose Holman, an athlete in the middle. There's sure some does. movement of the ball as no as into the ball game. Desiree Webster handling the basketball right there. Kicks it over to Lumen. 
You say it's out of bounds, Rose Holman basketball. They'll get it here. 46-23, Rose Holman with the lead. Rose Burnham will take the ball out of bounds. Giving up right now, Jamie Baum in back into the ball game. They'll give it up to Lumen. Lumen to Webster. To Burnham. Looking inside, they'll give it back up. Open look, they had a chance at it. Shots up, no good, rebound. Lumen had it and pulled out by Rose Burnham and they'll pull it back out. She traveled with it, but no call. Inside, shots up and no good by Baum and the rebound comes out to Franklin College, Georgia, uh, Hanel. Loudon kicks it up, three point shots up and no good and rebound Izzy Han, no set nice. Izzy Han with the block out. And she had a great block out so much so that they're she gonna did. call the foul on over the back. Maddie Barnes gets called for the foul. And this Nosa is going to have a chance to go shoot some free throws. Yeah, as soon as that ball went in the air, Nosa turned her back and blocked her out. <laughs> and uh, Really blocked her out. Yeah. <laughs> There's really? no way you're going to get around that one. There was not. So Nosa will go to the line. Again, 3.08 left to go in the third period. 46-23. And Nosa misses that one. Big time. She'll probably talk always, about that one when she goes back to the norm. It's always too. difficult <laughs> to, uh, you know, shoot your first free throw of the year. <laughs> Much rather have a, an easy layup or something. Makes it a lot easier. 47-23, Rose Hallman with the lead. And again, pressure defense by the players in for Rose Hallman. Anderson gave it up in the corner, picked back up by Anderson. Feeds it out to Barnes. Barnes with the drive, puts it up, and they're going to call the foul. Not sure who they're going to call that foul on. Foul is on the oh, my goodness. Wow. They called it on the 80. <laughs> no, is... no, so it was a good three feet away from her, and they're going to call the foul on her. Shots up and no good. Again, 47-23, Rose Holman with the lead. Third period, 2.43 left to go in this period. Shots up, no good. Rebound comes out to Rose Holman's Lowen. Over the other side is Webster. Back out. Nice ball movement. Everybody's a little bit excited here, can you tell? They are. They, they're just a little bit too excited. They're going to call another foul. And going to the line this time will be Rose Burnham. Avery Lumen has, has got into the ball game, and, and she's really played quite well here in her time on the floor. But that scoring that Rose Hallman was getting at 19 and 20 points a quarter is now down to seven. They just haven't scored the ball like they had in the first two periods. And part of that's yeah, just from the turnovers. Yeah, ex you're exactly right. Burnham puts the second yeah. free throw in. It's 48-23. Franklin leads the quarter at the moment, uh, nine to eight. Almost stolen away by Webster. They're running that weave out in front man defense and Webster's going to try to lock her down. Loudon gave it up to Barnes. Barnes will try to turn the corner on Iggy Hunt. Loudon kicks it outside with the spin on the inside is Hanauer. Can't get the shot to go and the rebound comes up and she's out of bounds. So stepping on the out of bounds line was Shelby Anderson. And Rose Holman will have the basketball. 48-23, trying to get the ball in on that full court pressure. Webster will try to break it. They'll give it up. Nosa Igihan with the ball back outside as they give it to Jamie Baum, to Webster. I would love to see them give it to Nosey down low on the block and let her 
spin around. Open look and a shot knocked down by Rose Burnham. 50 to 23, Rose Holman. But when you get an open shot for Burnham, you might as well take it. She did a great job there. And they're going to call a foul. They'll call a blocking foul on Nosa Igihan and picks up her second foul. <laughs> so substitutions in for Franklin College as a lot of starters back in, a lot of players back in that we've seen before. Bailey Gibson back in. Jasmine Walker. Libby Baker couldn't get that shot to fall. It's again 50 23, 117 left to go in the third period. Misses both of them. They're going to call lane violation on. Somebody. In they called home. it on, on Nosa Igihan, I think. Oh, did they? So they'll give her another free throw attempt. Baker puts this shot up and in. Bomb to Webster and right up the side, Iggy Hahn with the basketball. Webster with it. Open look, give and nice go. Cut, nice. Put it up, a great cut and a great pass. And Jamie Bomb scores an easy layup. It's 52 24. Under a minute left to go in the third period. It's a great cut there by Bomb. Great awareness. Deliver those passes. Three-point shot attempt is no good by Kayla Bruner. And we had the officials just talked to two players and said, it's just too rough both sides. Yeah, I think it was getting a little chippy. They called it there. out and said, stop it. No foul or anything like that. It's a stern talking to. Webster breaks the pressure on the drive. She'll put it up and doesn't get it, but she'll keep be fouled and she'll go to the line to shoot too. And all of a sudden, right towards the end of this quarter, yep. Rose Holman has scored basket after basket, just like they did in the first half. Desiree Webster, the 5'7 junior from Powder Springs, Georgia, is at the line. Again, shot opportunities. Everybody's getting a chance to play in this one. So Desiree will get that second opportunity. Puts it up and in, and it's 53-24. Rose Holman with the lead. Twenty-seven seconds left to go in the third period. Seventeen on that shot clock, driving down the lane, and they'll try to reverse it out. Ten seconds on the shot clock in the in the lane. Shots up and no mm -hmm. good. They'll call the foul. Looks like it's going to go against Iggy. Nosa Iggy on. So <laughs> she's going to get uh, another one, and she's not going to feel good about any of those foul calls. No, she is. Uh, <laughs> been in the game it looks like about four minutes and she's going to have three personal fouls and I'm not quite sure she deserved any of them <laughs> but that's but basketball that's what happens <laughs> again giving those opportunities at the line is Jasmine Walker missed the first one misses the second one and 10 seconds left to go here in the third period Get a shot Jamie Baum, and she's going to oh. get fouled on the outside. It's a hand check, and going to line will be number 23, and that's Jamie Baum. Jamie with 13 points uh, on the evening. Leading scorer for Rose Holman is Jordan Barlow with 15. Another point goes in. It's 54-24, lead now the largest of the game at 30 points. Make it 31, it's 55-24. Five and a half seconds left to go, and Webster playing great defense, 
they don't even get the shot off. That was a great, just great de defense by Desiree Webster. And we'll go to the fourth period. Rose Holman leads at the end of three, 55-24. Hey, this is Todd Hine with LaborLink. The federal unemployment benefits have ended. However, there has never been a better job market in history. This puts you in an incredible position. Go to GoLaborLink.com and apply now. We have many jobs available, but they will fill up fast due to demand. Hey, take advantage of the job market and start work right away with LaborLink. The city of Brazil was founded in 1866. By 1876, there were two schools, seven dry goods stores, two hardware stores, four churches, and five drug stores. One of those drug stores is still there today, Lynn's Pharmacy. Lynn's Pharmacy has grown from a small neighborhood drug store to a modern pharmacy, offering prescriptions and medical equipment with old-fashioned values and unparalleled service. You can even step back in time and visit Lynn's Soda Parlor. Here at Lynn's Pharmacy, downtown Brazil. You're watching College Sports on the Indiana Sports Network, presented by the Indiana Army National Guard. And again, we want to thank the Indiana Army National Guard for coming alongside Indiana Sports Network and sponsoring our broadcast of College Sports here on Indiana Sports Network. 55-24 is our score at the end of three periods. Franklin will have the basketball to start the fourth period, and they trail by 31. Baker with a basketball. You know, that was Rose Holman's worst quarter of the night, shooting at 40%, for, but it was Franklin's best, uh, shooting at 20%. And at the start of the quarter, Franklin was out playing Rose Holman for about seven or eight minutes, then all of a sudden, Rose Holman turned it on and scored basically 15 points in that, or 15 points in the third period. Burnham with the basketball in the corner. She'll drive, spins, puts a shot up and in. They're going to call an offensive foul on her. And, you know, that's not all bad for Rose because for Rose Burnham, even though she picks up her fourth foul, that was a great offensive, power strong, I'm going to take the ball to the basket move that Rose needs to do every now and then. Yeah, I agree. It was uh, definitely a strong move. and. And sometimes that happens and when you have that strong move. But for her, right. that's a that's one of those things. Well, hey, I can do this, and so that's a that's a really good move for Rose. Pull up shot is no good by Bruner. Rebound and kicked back around the horn, and giving that opportunity to see if they can score this one. They give it inside to Walker. Walker faced up, spin, puts the shot up, doesn't get it to go. But that's a nice move by Jasmine Walker, the six-foot freshman from Jeffersonville. Barlow picks up her second personal. You know, Franklin has come out and played with a lot more intensity, just even from the bench standpoint. This second half, uh, it may be obviously a little, a little too late, but <coughs> you like to see as a coach, they, they're still fighting. They're not. They're not. Not giving up. Walker will get that second shot. She doesn't get it, and a rebound comes out to Tabby Fultz. Hine pushes it up. Fultz open, but she'll pull it around and move it around the horn. Webster. Hine feed inside to Barlow. It's tipped out of bounds. We want to thank Crane Credit Union, the Hamilton Center, Indiana Army National Guard, Labor Link. Lynn's Pharmacy, Sonic Drive-In, Union Health, and York Automotive, all sponsors for this evening's ball game. Substitutions back in for Rose Holman as several players take a seat. Maya Randolph had that open look. She probably should have taken it. Jester, feed inside, forced feed. Shots up by Abby Fultz, doesn't get it, and a rebound. It'll go the other direction. They're going to call the foul on Hine on the rebound such that uh, Rowan Hine went over the back. Rowan's second foul. She has seven points, seven rebounds, and eight assists tonight. With the drive down the lane and not getting it to fall was Maddie Barnes. Rebound comes out to Rose Holman. Maya Randolph with it. Uh, 
On the outside is Abby Foltz. She'll try to turn the corner, gives it up. Randolph, spin, drive, down the lane, puts the shot up, and she's going to go to the line and shoot two shots. Nice spin move there by Randolph. She is yet to score tonight. Has been a big contributor on the defensive end. Let's see if she can get into the scoring column with these two free throws. Well, again, you you know you, we haven't seen uh, Nola Wilson. Uh, there are several other you know just. It, there's always this rotation in what we're going to see in college basketball, depending on what's going on this year, especially in the HCAC, we're going to see teams play without one or two players for a period of time. It could be COVID related. It couldn't be. And we don't know what it is at a certain point and nobody's allowed to tell them. But at the same time, each team is going to go through one of those situations sure. where somebody's not going to play for a while, whether it's injury or whatever is going on. Yep. And that's one of the things Franklin's going through tonight. And with Rose Holman, they're going through it at certain points. And you've got to be able to just handle the what's going on and see what you can get done. Abby Fultz with the block on that shot. Rowan Hine, lead pass. They'll give it up to Jester, and she lost it. That's one of those where it's very difficult to have that lead pass that goes over somebody's right over head. The top. Yeah, That's exactly. hard to catch and hard to function with. It sure is. Kind of laughed it off. And go you, to the you, other. You're go right. Other. Going back to, you know, players are going to be out. This season is going to be, uh, you know, have its ups and downs, and it's which team can adapt uh, the the best and you're oh. seeing that in the NFL you're seeing that in all sports now and that was a held jump ball as uh, the shot was tried and attempted by Sidney Doan the freshman from Greencastle and literally Rowan Hine just grabbed the basketball and so Doan just the push of trying to shoot the basketball put her on the floor it wasn't any mean play or anything it's just a held ball Possession arrow favored Rose Holman and uh, the fighting engineers with the basketball. 7.15 left to go in the ball game. A 56-24 lead for the fighting engineers. Yeah, again, at that 32-point lead, largest of the game for the engineers. With the drive, scoops it up and scoring the basket nice is Myra Randolph and the sophomore from Westerville, Ohio. Picks up her first field goal. Three points on the night for Myra. Rebound comes out, and there's the, the one of those things where you're going to have a learning curve right there. When you grab the basketball and a rebound, you don't pull it down and put it down below your waist because somebody's going to grab the ball, and that's exactly what happened that time to uh, Kaylin Jester. It's one of those chin the ball, turn around, and outlet <laughs> the pass. That's right. With a basketball is O'Day. Oh, nice block. Shot blocked and should have been out of bounds, and that's what he called. Oh. That is a correct call. And when I say that, Allie Fruits was out, did not establish herself as she came back in. You have to have both right. feet down. She only got one of them down and tipped the basketball. It's a good effort in what's going on, but the possession yeah, it was arrow. a great block. But she <laughs> yeah. And I was more impressed by that. And and the officials are discussing this one. No, they're discussing what they're going to get at Sonic after the game. <laughs> I don't know. They're going to actually what they're I'm looking wondering. at is a shot clock. I can almost guarantee it's a shot clock. And we'll see. Yeah, the, and they're going to call uh, blocking foul on uh, Allie Fultz. So Allie gets called for a block. Almost in the bonus situation now, getting closer to it. Fourth foul. Next one will put Franklin at the line. 58-24. They're going to feed it in the low post. Trying to get that shot up was Jenna Loudon, and she wasn't able to do it. Gives it back out to O'Day, who drives the lane, puts the shot up. 
Rebound and it's kicked out. Here comes Hine with a full race down. Oh. And see, Rowan Hine wants everybody else to yeah, score. She, she should have just taken that one in and laid it in the hole. Yeah, that's the second she, or third time that she, she she's a true teammate. She wants she probably to right now a detriment. She doesn't she's like, Oh, I've got enough points. Here you score this. Right. And she needs to put that one right up. She's in the lead. You don't want to throw it she back a, to score it. She had a much better angle too. Yeah. Fultz couldn't get that duck under move to go, and rebound comes out to Franklin College. Hanauer gave it off to Loudon. Loudon gave it off to O'Day. O'Day, cross court, really nice pass, got that one through, couldn't get it to fall, and the rebound comes out to Rose Holman. Barlow gave it up to Randolph, and Randolph looking inside, had Barlow, did it late, kicked it back. Randolph with the drive, shots up, doesn't get it to go. Ooh, another tough stretch of basketball here. We say tough stress because there's not a lot going on scoring-wise for right. either team. They're just it's tough to watch and tough to play. There's a hand check mm. and going to the line for Hanover will be number 22 in Georgia Hanauer. Substitutions in. Rose Burnham in the ball game again, and so is Jamie Baum. Burnham with four fouls coming in. We'll see. But Burnham tends to handle everything well as far as, like, handling the basketball yeah. well, and, and she just kind of steadies the whole offense. 58-25 is that free throw is made. We want to thank our transportation specialists for Indiana Sports Network, and that's York Automotive. They have five locations in Brazil, Greencastle, Crawfordsville, and Plainfield. 5.20 left to go in the ball game, and it's a 32-point lead. Hine pulls up and doesn't get the shot to fall. She had an open look, and instead they'll pull it back out. Jamie Baum. Crossover. Looks to drive. Has an open look in Rose Burnham from 15. Can't get it to go. Rebound tipped up. Burnham gets it up and in. Or Barlow, excuse me. Jordan Barlow puts that one up and in. Jordan Barlow with 17 points, 16 rebounds, I believe. Shots up and no good by Avery Phelps. Nice as defense. Tipped out of bounds. And timeout's been called. We'll take one. It's Rose Holman with the lead, 60 to 26. Here at Mossy Oak Properties, Indiana Land and Lifestyle, we know dirt. Last year, this piece of property produced 50 acres of beans. It's a little low on nitrogen, and the pH is 6.8. <laughs> oh, and they also had cattle on here. When it comes to knowing your ground, isn't it important to have a realtor who does as well? And that's no bull. For all your Indiana land needs, Check us out at indianalandandlifestyle.com. We are your Indiana Land Specialist. Welcome to Sonic. May I take your order? One grape cheeseburger. I'm on it. Grape cheeseburger, almost ready. On my way. Someone pass me the crepe sauce. Almost ready on the burger. One Sonic crepe cheeseburger. I'm Ryan Luce with State Farm in Clinton, Indiana. We're here to help life go right for you and your family. Our team takes pride in helping families in the Wabash Valley. With all of their insurance and financial needs. We are here to make your claims process simple. Like a good neighbor. You are watching HCAC Women's Basketball at rolls Holman on the Indiana Sports Network. Hello. Stupid. Welcome back to Rose Holman. 60 to 26. Rose Holman with the lead. Women's basketball. Two of these teams were three and one coming in. They're both three and one. And we expected a really tight ball game. And to Rose Holman's credit, they've just dominated the ball game in uh, in almost all phases. And it has a 60 to 26 lead with 435 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Loud with the drive. Can't get it to go. And it's tipped out of bounds. She just Taught, lost it out of bounds. Rose Hallman with the basketball. 4.30 left to go in the ball game. I know Coach Prevo would love to end this game you know, on a high note. They've looked pretty sloppy in that third quarter. and 
been tough here this fourth quarter as well. They've only scored five points so far for Rose Holman. But again, their, their scoring total is about where they're supposed to be. Avery Phelps with that shot, can't get it to go. And shots yeah, up, and they, they'll, they'll cut that one down to 32. But again, uh, once Franklin scored, has substitutes into the ball game now too. Once you scored 21 in that first quarter, there's, you know, there's not many times you're going to score 21 in a quarter <laughs> or 19 as they did in the second quarter. Rowan Hine will go to the line to shoot free throws. She has seven points. She's had seven points since the first half. And realistically, she's, she likes to make everybody else better. And you can just see how she plays the game. Makes everybody better. Everybody feels better because she plays. No one's going to gonna say, well, she's the ball hog. She doesn't know. She just, she's the leader. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And she is the leader both in almost every category as uh, she steps the line and puts that free throw in. Yes, she has eight assists tonight. And the next closest is Jester with three as far as assists go. Well, she was, she was close. If she'd have played the second half the way she did the first, she'd have been in a triple-double. She played so well in that first half. Eight points now on the night for Rowan. Open look, feed inside to Jester, puts the shot up, no good. See, there was another opportunity for what you and I would say a nice assist. Didn't fall, but she just makes everybody play basketball to the better of the team. That makes a big difference. It sure does. Outside is Jamie Baum. Baum puts the runner up and in. Nice. Nice little left-handed One-handed left-handed runner, yeah, I like yeah. that by Baum. Three minutes left to go in the ball game. It's 63-28, Rose Allman with the lead. Sarah O'Day with the drive, left-hand step mm -hmm. put right back in her face by Jamie Baum. Jamie's got 17 now to tie Barlow for lead scores. Jamie has six rebounds, one assist, one steal, and one block. Jamie Baum will set the offense, gives it up to Webster, who check into the ball game. Feed now down low inside to Lumen. She'll put the shot up and in. Avery Lumen, the junior from Muncie, puts the shot up and in, and it's 65-28. So just an opportunity to get some players in the ball game at a certain point. Yeah, and look. and it's really nice because Rose Holman did not have a huge contingent of players last year. It made it very difficult for them to practice everything else. Right now, they've got a good group of players who are playing hard, and they're going to gain possession of second place in the conference by themselves with this win tonight. 66-28 is our score. And again, Rose Hallman, a statement game tonight, potentially, showing people that they can play basketball with anybody in the conference. Spinning drive and a great move on the inside by Georgia Hanauer. Also making a statement that it doesn't matter what time of day the game is. No. Or they are <laughs> game to play. Phelps picks up the foul for Franklin in substitution comes in as Myra comes back into the ball game. Myra Randolph, the 5'5 sophomore guard from Westerville, Ohio, back in. Bomb to Webster. Randolph thought about the three. Yeah, she did. She thought about that one a long time. Uh, ten seconds left on the shot clock. Crossed over, given up a three-point shot, no good, and out of bounds as Peyton Miller couldn't find the range on that one. But again, the, the bench has played. Everybody's gotten a chance to play. And, and 66 points on the I, board. Everyone has scored for Rose Holman. It's a good night when everybody scores yeah. and they're all playing well. 
Rebound comes out to Baum. 1.30 left to go in the ball game. Baum with three for five from three-point range. The only one. Randolph oh, I was ready nails to the three. <laughs> I was going to say, Baum was the only one with a three-pointer. She had three of them <laughs> until that one right there by Randolph. 69 to 30. And again, a big lead for Rose Hallman at the end of this ball game. A minute left to go in the ball game. Shelby Anderson will give it up. Shots up and no good by Misty Kimberlin, a freshman from Austin, Indiana. And she'll go to the line and shoot free throws. Dosa Igihan into the ball game will replace. Jamie Baum, who takes uh, the seat. Jamie Baum, the freshman from Los Altos, California. A, another quality, big-time ball game for the freshman. Yeah, she does not play like a freshman at all. Clearly making a statement for freshman of the year potential in the conference. 17 points for Jordan Barlow and Jamie Baum. Both 17 points each in this win for Rose Holman. 69-31 as Myra Randolph has the basketball. She'll drive, try to pull up, step back three. Mm, that was a heat check there. Her yep, and she knocked her out of bounds. Iggy oh. Hahn with the basketball. Randolph feeds it inside oh. to Webster, and they try to get Webster to lay up, and nobody's more upset about that than Nosa Iggy Hahn. She wanted to see her score. 69-31, Rose Holman with the lead. 33 seconds left to go in a ball game. Just a few seconds off the shot clock. They'll give it up to Shelby Anderson back outside. And again, the freshman Georgia Hanauer has played a lot of ball for Franklin and played very well. Three-point shots up and no good. Rebound comes out. Hanauer again, can't get it to go. Tipped around, rebound, Iggy Hahn. Webster, and they're going to pull it out. And that's your ball game, 69-31. Rose Holman with the victory tonight, and they will raise their record to 6-4 and four on the season, 4-1 and one in HCAC play. Franklin will fall to four and seven and three and two in HCAC play. And coming into this one, there were two teams that have, um, that were in second place, and that was both Rose Holman and Franklin. So Rose Holman will maintain second place with a four and one record. Transylvania still undefeated in conference play at, at four and zero oh and 11 and zero oh overall. Uh, but that also distances Rose Holman from several of the other teams within the conference. Yeah, it really does. You know, we knew this was a big conference matchup early in the conference season. And, again, coming into tonight, we thought these two teams would be uh, very evenly matched. But it, it, Rose Holman just, you know, had the pedal to the metal early in that first quarter and the first half and really just set the tone for the, uh, for the entire game. Mm -hmm. And when you're looking at things, um, you know, Rose Holman has just had the opportunity to play basketball with this group of players just this year. I mean, it's it's not like this is built. This is just immediately had several ball players come in, uh, add depth, add passion, add emotion, and add offensive firepower um, is very evident in compared to what it was last year. Yeah. They can score the basketball. And as we have said you know they're they're a young group but the the core nucleus is is getting better each and every game that they play together uh tonight you know they were led by barlow and bomb both with 17. uh barlow had a double double with 17 points and 14 rebounds uh hein was real close to a double double as well but she had eight points uh nine rebounds and eight assists she really could have had the triple double as we mentioned <laughs> She played so well in that first quarter, first half. Uh, again, Baum had 17 points, seven rebounds. Um, Kester had three. Burnham had seven. Uh, Webster had one. Randolph, six. Miller, two. Faults, four. 
Lumen three and Iggy Han one. So again, every Rose Holman player uh, was able to get in the scorebook uh, tonight in that scoring column. And just overall, again, a little sloppy at times in that third and fourth quarter, but overall just a great performance by the Rose Holman engineers. So again, Rose Holman comes in three and one on the season in the conference now four and one they're in second place in the conference all by themselves yep what a huge improvement over last year's team uh, they're playing well things look very good and and for us here at indiana sports network the next time we're going to broadcast a ball game is going to be again these same uh, ladies as they're going to take on Manchester College next Wednesday evening at a 7.30 start. Again, our next broadcast will be next Wednesday against Manchester College, against Rose Holman here in women's basketball. 7.30 at home here at Rose Holman, and we'll have all that exciting action for you here on Indiana Sports Network. For my partner, Troy Fears, I'm Herb King. We'll say so long, and again, Rose Holman wins 69-31. This game is presented by the Indiana Army National Guard. This program is a copyrighted production of Indiana Sports Network and cannot be shown, reproduced, or redistributed in any way or in any form without prior written permission from Indiana Sports Network.